Welcome to lesson 11 of GMAT Math Basics. Today, we're going to answer the question, how do you add decimals? We've talked about long addition in the past, and the great news here is that all the same rules of long addition do apply to adding decimals by hand with just one major adjustment that needs to be made. Now, if you're not sure how to do long addition, then that's back in lesson six of this series. And if you don't need help with GMAT Math Basics, just head a little bit further back in the feed for some more advanced topics. Starting off, I think the wise thing for you to do is to quiz yourself on the steps of long addition. So do you recall how to do long addition? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Let's briefly rehash the steps for the sake of clarity. The first step that I recommend is what I call stacking the numbers. And what that means is writing one number right above the other number on your paper and making sure that you line up the digit place values. So like the tens digit of number one is right above the tens digit of number two. The hundreds digit of the first number is right above the hundreds digit of the second number, et cetera. The second step is you add the units digit or what's sometimes called the ones digit. If you need help with basic definitions, those are back in the first three episodes of this series. Once you add the units digit, you're going to repeat that process of adding within each digit column, moving from right to left. And if you get a two digit result from adding those single digits, then you're going to carry the tens place of that result to the top of the next column to the left. So if that sounds confusing and you're not sure what I'm talking about, definitely head back to back to lesson six to get the basics down. If that sounds super familiar, let's build on those basic elements and take it to the next level. The key new concept when you are adding decimals is that when you stack the numbers, you want to make sure that you line up the decimal points vertically. In a way, this is a new application of an old concept that I was just talking about, which is lining up the digit place values when you're adding. And we're just doing that also with the decimal point itself. So let me give an example to illustrate. Let's say we want to add five, the number five, and the number 0 0.003, or what you could refer to as three one thousandths, if you expressed it as a fraction, same value. Where's the decimal place in the number five? Technically, five could be expressed as 5.0. And when we say five point something, we mean that we're putting a decimal place right to the right of that number. So five point means the decimal point goes right to the right of five. And then you can write a zero after that. 5.0 perhaps obviously has exactly the same value as the number five, but it's a good idea to write it that way so that when you're stacking, you can visualize what I'm about to walk you through. So let's imagine we're going to do our first step of long addition, which is stacking the numbers. And let's say we're gonna put 5.0 at the top. Right below that, we're going to want to write 0 0.003. And we just want to make sure that the decimal point from 5.0 is directly above the decimal point from 0 0.003. Again, it's, it's a familiar concept. What we're doing is we're lining up the zero from 5.0, which is the tenths place, with the zero in the tenths place from 0 0.003. So I guess theoretically, if you just followed all the advice that I gave in lesson six about long addition, like super, super literally, then maybe this would be no big deal. But I found through many years of doing this with people that it's helpful to have a little bit of additional instruction on the finer points of addition with decimals, pun intended, for better or for worse, everybody. So... First step is you stack the numbers and you line up the decimal places vertically. If it helps, you can add zeros to the to the uh, place values that do not have them yet. So for example, below the five from 5.0, you can add a zero to the left of the decimal point from 0 0.003 so that it's written as 0 0.003 instead. I found for a lot of people, if you're struggling with the basics, 
or you're just getting started with this after many, many years of not doing it, that can really help out. It's, it's probably not like a game changer, but it could be. It could be if you're, if you're struggling. Similarly, you can add zeros after 5.0 to make it 5.000. And that just helps you see what you're adding within each column. And, and you might do that at the beginning as you're relearning a lot of this stuff or learning it from the first time for the first time. And as you get more comfortable with it, you might skip over that convention. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Once you've got everything lined up, you just perform the addition within each column, starting at the far right digit and moving to the digit to the left, and then the digit to the left, and then the digit to the left. So the far right column for 5.000 plus 0 0.003 is going to be zero on top and three on the bottom. That's that's the rightmost digit. And we kind of got into this last week with decimal division. I mean, theoretically, I could write an infinite number of zeros to the right of those numbers and just add up all those zeros, but that's not going to change the value of the number. And it's probably not going to help your GMAT score. So I don't recommend doing that. But like, if you wanted to think deeper about the theory here, you can go as far to the right as you want with zeros. But I recommend starting with the rightmost non-zero digit just for the sake of clarity. So that would be three. And then there's a zero right above it. So we just add zero and three and that yields three. And we write that at the bottom of the thousandths digit column in the result area. If you're familiar with my recommendations for long addition, I'll have drawn a horizontal line beneath the stack of the two numbers. And that separates the result, which is gonna be below the two numbers that I'm adding. That's the way I like to do it. It's not the only way to do it, but I recommend it. I've found that's the best bet for most people on the GMAT because you don't have a calculator and because what you write on the paper for most of us is going to be critically, critically important, much more important than it might seem at the outset. So if you can develop good scratch work habits from the beginning, virtually guaranteed that that's going to pay off in a massive way as you move forward. Once we have done that addition in the thousandths digit column, we just move to the column to the left and do the exact same thing. So here in the hundredths digit column, we actually have a zero from 5.000 and a zero from 0 0.003. So zero plus zero is just zero. And we write that at the bottom of the hundredths digit column. So in the result area, we would have a three on the far right and then a zero right to the left of that so far. Then we move to the column to the left, which is the tenths column. Also a zero from 5.000 and a zero from 0 0.003. So zero plus zero again, is zero, and that goes in the result area of the tenths digit column. Then let's return to our key point here. We want to bring down the decimal point to the result area as well. And this is part of the reason that we stack that decimal point on top from the top number and then on bottom from the bottom number, which also makes it clearer where the decimal point in the result is going to go. So you can think about it as bringing that decimal point down or just adding a decimal point to the result or just a simple fact of aligning the numbers properly. However, it is productive to think about it. Think about it that way. And by the way, you can also do that when you're first setting up the problem if you find that convenient to just write the decimal point in the result area when you're doing your initial stack. It's really up to you. I haven't found a major difference in people doing it one way or the other. What that means is in the result area, we should have 0 0.003 so far. Again, we just move to the column to the left and we sum the digits in that column. So in this case, we're in the units digit column now, right to the left of the decimal point. We've got five from 5.000 and we've got zero from 0 0.003. And the result of five plus zero is five. So in the result area, now we have 5.003, which is the result of five plus 0 0.003. This might seem trivial. <laughs> Many of you could probably do five plus 0 0.003 in your head without this technique, but that's not really the point. The point is to understand the mechanics of the technique with a couple simple examples so that it's usable for you when you do want to use it with more difficult and complicated situations. Just for the sake of your learning, let's try a slightly more intricate example right now. And I'll talk you through some of the interesting things that can happen when you're adding decimals. Just so that you're a little bit more prepared when, if and when, the heavy stiff hits on test day. So let's try 0 0.456 plus 0 0.789. 
So if you're listening on pure audio feed, it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the two numbers. And then we're just putting a decimal point to the left of each of those numbers. So instead of 456 and 789, it's 0. 0.456 or 456 thousandths, if you expressed it as a fraction, plus 0. 0.789 or 789 thousandths expressed as a fraction. So quick quiz, see if you can remember the steps that we're going to go through here. First step is we're going to stack the numbers and be sure to line up the decimal points. I'm going to put 0.456 on top and 0.789 underneath it. Having said that, you can add numbers in any order. So if you're more comfortable with the larger number on top, that also works. And like I just mentioned, I like to draw a horizontal line underneath that stack to separate the result. Then we're going to sum the digits furthest to the right. In this case, that furthest digit to the right is the thousandths digit and we're going to sum the digits in that column. So here it's six from 4, 5, 0.456 plus nine from 0. 0.789. Six plus nine is 15. So we write a five from the 15 at the bottom of the thousandths digit column, the column we're just operating in. And then we carry the one from 15 to the top of the hundredths digit column. So if you're familiar with how to do long addition, this should sound typical to you. Then we move to the column of the left and we sum the digits in that column, which is going to be the hundredths digit column. So we've got the one from our carry in the previous step, plus the five from 0.456 plus the eight from 0.789. You can just imagine those lined up vertically. One plus five plus eight is 14. We put the four from 14 at the bottom of the hundredths digit column, and we carry the one from 14 to the top of the column to the left, which is the tenths digit column. In the tenths column, we've now got the one we just carried from 14 plus the four from 0.456 plus the seven from 0.789. One plus four plus seven is 12. And once again, we write the two from 12 at the bottom of the tenths column, and then we move the decimal point down as well if you hadn't already done that when you were setting up the question originally. Then we carry to the column of the left, which in this case is the units digit column. So that means we're now operating to the left of the decimal point. And this will happen sometimes when you are adding numbers that sum to something larger than one. You're going to end up adding up just decimals sometimes, but then you'll get a number that's larger than one. And that's fine. That's just totally normal. And we're just going to run the same technique. I just didn't want you to get weirded out by that if it happens on test day. Same process, we just carry the one from 12 to the top of the column to the left, which is the units digit column. And if it helps, write a zero to the left of each decimal point in 0.456 so that it becomes 0 0.456. And then you can do the same with 0 0.789 so that it becomes 0 0.789. And then you can see the one on top that we just carried plus zero right below it plus zero right below that. If we add one plus zero plus zero, then that would yield one. And so we write that at the bottom of the units digit column in the result area to give us our final result of 1.245. So the result of 0.456 plus 0.789 is 1.245. If you were adding more complex numbers, the process would be identical. That pretty much covers all the bases that you would need for adding decimals with long addition, again, you might have just been able to apply the stuff I was teaching you about a few weeks back. But just in the interest of making this process as easy and painless for you as, as it can possibly be, I thought it would be helpful to do a quick touch base on this, just so that you don't start doubting yourself too much in the moment if you need to sum some decimals using long addition under time pressure on a test that's very important for most of us for the rest of our careers. So again, to rehash exact same process as long addition, just need to line up the decimal points in the original stack and then bring that decimal point straight down to the result. And if you line up all the place values properly, you should be good to go. If you have questions about this or if you have feedback for us, you can reach us at the GMAT strategy on current social channels. And we love hearing from all of you. So please don't be shy about reaching out. As always, my greatest hope is that this material will make your studies as easy and painless as they can possibly be. If you want more tips and strategies for optimizing your performance on the GMAT, 
head to our website, thegmatstrategy.com, which is linked in the description of this content, and check out our free video on how you can reach your dream GMAT score in half the normal time. In the meantime, this is a weekly show, so please subscribe and please stay positive and stay consistent with your studies. I'll talk to you all soon.